The 2023 Texas Tech football schedule is officially here, and on today's video, we're going to give our schedule prediction, record prediction, and everything in between. I haven't even looked at the schedule yet. It just came out. It is 1 p.m. on Tuesday, January 31st. We're going to break this straight down and give you live, instant reaction to this. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Nobody's giving you this kind of content on Texas Tech Athletics this fast on YouTube. Be a part of this growing community as we inch closer to 2000 and hopefully go well beyond that into the future. So let's jump right into this because, again, we've got a Texas Tech football schedule. The Red Raiders will start their season off. And, well, this is going to be interesting because they just released the video of it. And I'm kind of curious to see exactly where Texas Tech will go um, this year, because I, I think when you look at it, you've got some interesting things. And here we go. We've got it in the easiest form. So we know already that Texas Tech is going to play Oregon in week two. We know they're going to go to Wyoming and they, we know where they're going to play Tarleton at home in week three. It's going to go Wyoming in week one in Laramie, Wyoming. Bo Nix, a Heisman candidate in Oregon, probably a top eight team in the country coming to the 806 in week two. Then you play Tarleton and then here we go. Conference play starts. Your first conference game will be at West Virginia. That should be a W right there. I think you should start 1-0 right there. Um, don't know exactly who's going to be the West Virginia quarterback. I would assume it's green, but Texas Tech is a better program than the Mountaineers right now. And if you ask me, I think you win in Laramie. I think it's going to be a coin flip against Oregon at home. I truly do. And then Tarleton, you win. And I think you beat West Virginia as well. So I think you're looking at three and one worst case scenario if you're Texas Tech because you lose to Oregon. But you could have a 4-0 start. Then your first home game. At home, you welcome back a familiar foe, Donovan Smith starting quarterback for the Houston Cougars. That will be the first home Big 12 matchup of the year for the Red Raiders. I like that one as well. I like how this schedule starts out for Texas Tech in terms of what you have in the Big 12. You start off with a team that, in all honesty, will probably be picked towards the bottom, if not the bottom feeder of the Big 12. Get off with a win right there against West Virginia. And then Houston, you already beat them last year. I think this roster is going to be better than 2022's. I think 2023, you're a much better football team. I think you should start out 4-1 and one right there. Worst case scenario, you move on and you face off to start October. You go to Waco. And you play the Baylor Bears. This one's interesting because Baylor lost a lot of guys, but they also a lot of brought a lot of guys in as well. Um, it looks like they're going to go Blake Shapin, question mark, at the quarterback position. But you know a couple things about Baylor. Simple and plain, they're going to be able to run the football. They're going to play good defense. This is going to be interesting at this point of the year because Texas Tech, like I said, I, I'm going to have them at 4-1 and one right now. That's my official stance right now. 4-1 and one going into Waco. I say make it five and one. I think they win next year in Baylor. Um, I think it's a big game for Texas Tech. Um, I think that that could really change things early on, and you could potentially start out five and one with a home game in the middle of October against Kansas State. And this is where things get tricky because I think Kansas State is very, very good. I think Will Howard is very, very good. I'm going to throw an L right here. It's Texas Tech. Um, and I, I think, again, you're, you're five and two. That's fine. I think when you look at what Texas Tech has right now, and it wouldn't be sh surprising if Texas Tech beat K-State, but I do think you got to get a little bit of wiggle room there and uh, give credit to K-State. They are a really good football team. Yes, I understand they're losing the Big 12 Player of the Year on the defensive side, um, but they're also losing Deuce Vaughn. Like, they're losing guys, but I think K-State is a very well-coached football team. I think they have Will Howard going back. They figured out their quarterback situation. Um, that one's going to be a close one. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm flipping it. I think they beat K-State at home. Yeah, I think they beat K-State at home. So to revisit it, and then we'll get to some, we'll get to the back half of the schedule here in just a second. I think Texas Tech beats Wyoming in Laramie. I think they lose to Oregon. So one and one. I think they beat Tarleton. I think they beat West Virginia. I think they beat Houston. I think they beat Baylor, and I think they beat K-State. Six and one to start the season for the Red Raiders. Then they go to Provo. 
Then they go to Provo to face off against the BYU Cougars. Man, that one's tough. I, I don't know. I have a lot of respect for that BYU football program. I think Texas Tech probably loses that one and goes 6-2 and two into the bye week, which is interesting because they get the bye, but then they play on Thursday night at home against TCU in primetime. Yes, right there after Halloween weekend, Texas Tech is playing TCU. That one's interesting to me because it can go a lot of ways for Texas Tech on that front. But also, you're going to know who Texas Tech is at that point and TCU. TCU's losing a lot of players to the NFL draft. Uh, obviously, Max Duggan, a Heisman type guy. You got Quentin Johnston on the outside and Keandre Miller back there in the backfield. You got a lot of dudes there losing, not even Avila up front on their offensive line, who I didn't mention, right? And a couple of defensive players. So, since that's a home game, I'm going to pick Texas Tech there. So six and two. Uh, you go to Kansas, that's tough um, right there. Because what, what do you have at your Kansas? You get Jalen Daniels back. That's a big deal for the Jayhawks. I really like what they're doing. Um, I'll say this. I think Texas Tech probably loses one of those games right there. And I'm just going to say they lose the road game. So let's just say they have three losses right there to the Red Raiders. All right, then the final two weeks of the year, you face off against UCF at home, the, the Knights, the national champions from a few years back, head to the 806. And if you get the joke, I appreciate you. Uh, they head to the 806 for the last home game of the year. I think Texas Tech gets it done there. That means they have three losses going down to Texas where they inevitably will play on, well, the Friday after Thanksgiving, as they feels like they typically do against the Longhorns. And that could have a lot of implications if it holds true, if I'm right on the record prediction there in terms of who plays in the Big 12 championship game. A lot going on at that point. Um, but I think 8-4 and four is probably the right way to go here. And I'm going to say Texas Tech loses that game. So I have Texas Tech at 8-4. and four. Let me recap the wins that I have. And I want you all to let me know down in the comments. you agree or disagree with my instant reaction to this? This is the first time I'm looking at the schedule, right? I'll make more videos and Lyle and I will talk about it a little bit more uh, at a lengthy conversation tomorrow. But I wanted to get instant reaction to my first time seeing this schedule. I think they beat Wyoming. They beat Tarleton. They beat West Virginia. They beat Houston, they beat Baylor, they beat K-State, they beat TCU, and they beat UCF. That is eight wins. That would be a, uh, I I'd take it, if I was a Texas Tech fan at that point, with a chance to go potentially to 9-3 and three with that last game against Texas on the road where you win nine games. But I'm going to go 8-4 and four for the Red Raiders next season and Hey, they'll have a chance to compete for the Big 12 title. I want you guys to tell me down in the comments, though. How many games do you have Texas Tech winning next season after you just first glanced at the schedule? It's good to have this finally out. It took you long enough, Big 12, but we finally have it. And there are some primetime matchups. Again, the home matchups for Texas Tech next year, Oregon. That'll be a top 25 team. You got Tarleton. You got a familiar face in Donovan Smith coming to the 806. You've got the previous Big 12 champions in K-State Wildcats, then a team that went to the college football playoff in TCU coming out to the 806 on a Thursday night. And you're not going to the bounce house this year, but the bounce house is coming to the 806 in the UCF Knights. Again, I'm R.C. Maxfield for the latest news, rumors, and instant reaction to everything Texas Tech. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.